What's up guys? Alright, so three cameras were just announced recently. Have the freaking first it was the Nikon Z6 and Z7. Then it was the Fuji X-T3. And then shortly after the Canon EOS R. Three mirrorless cameras. They all have their pros and cons. I don't care about spec sheets. I don't care about any of that junk. I care about usability, practicality, and feature set. That's about it. So let's start with the Nikon, Nikon. After so many videos, people are starting to have me say Nikon. But in my heart, it's still Nikon. I don't care though. Only one SD card slot, it's already a pass for me. The price costs more than an A7 III. That's a pass. Crappy video features. And just crappy focus. Alright, scratch that one off the list. Now the Nikon Z7. Sure, it has more megapixels than the A7R3, but it costs a bigger hefty price tag. Don't want it. Again, one SD card slot. Again, worse battery. I didn't even say that part, but it's true, worse battery. Pointless to me. Alright, so, no Nikon camera. And by the way, I do have an A7R3. Alright, now the Fuji. And it's sad, I never gave a crap about Fujis, period. Never cared about them, figured they were just for hipsters or people that want to have vintage looking cameras who don't really care too much about the way the cameras look or perform, they just want something different. But the X-T3, it looks awesome. It's priced right, 1500 bucks without the lens, body only, whatever, 1800 bucks with the kit lens. It has 4K 60. I mean, even the Sony doesn't do that. Yes, it's not a full frame camera. Whatever. Who cares? For that price, that's fine for the other features you're getting. And you are getting the two SD card slots. That's wonderful. That's amazing. I don't care if you're doing hobbyist work. I don't care if you're doing professional work. You need two slots because the options are there for other competing manufacturers at, most of the time, better price points. So... Even a 5D Mark III has two card slots. Yes, one's a CF card, whatever. Who cares? You can get one of those cameras used for like 12, 1300 bucks. Sometimes even cheaper if it's a higher shutter count. And it still produces great photos, even with crappy kit lenses. But we're talking about mirrors. Now let's actually jump back to Canon. I just brought up the 5D Mark III. All right, the EOS R. Everything was great about the camera, except for, again, one SD card slot. I love how it's the same battery. Most people have about 30 of those batteries laying around. I don't even own Canon cameras anymore, and I have a few of the batteries laying around. I even have an AC adapter I can plug in. So if I got into that system again, I'd be fine as far as battery life goes. Lenses. I don't like adapters. I just don't. They need to find a way to have universal you can just plug in any type of Canon lens that you want. Maybe you have to turn the lens this way and then flip it in. And other lenses you have to have it at a certain other angle to flip it in. But it'll have multiple ports. Flipping it upside down. That's what would be great. But no. They're only bringing out four lenses for it when it comes out. One of the lenses costs just the same price as the camera. And then the other lenses, they're expensive too. So it's like, what is the point? I mean, yeah, if you have the money to get into it, then you don't really care about having those other lenses anyway. But if not, then why even buy the camera? Because the camera you have suits what you're using it for. It'll suit the freaking camera you have because you have all those EF lenses. You have them all, all the L glass or whatever. You don't need any of that other stuff. You don't need a mirrorless. And it's sad because it's a completely new mount, so it's going to bastardize the M-Line. Sure, you could buy adapters, but after you buy those adapters, what is the point? 
And again, there's one SD card slot. Just get a Sony. I mean, nobody's using A mount lenses anymore. And you can put full frame and crop sensor lenses on your mirrorless bodies. Sure, there's a crop factor with that, but it's better than Canon. You can't even do that. I tried it. I had a freaking uh, full frame camera and I couldn't put the crop sensor lens on. And it was funny because I didn't even know you could do it with Sony, but I just got an A6000 and I was like, you know what, let me see something. I put that freaking 18-55 to crap, I call it crap lens, to crop lens, right on my A7R3 and it worked. Sure, there was a vignette, but once I put it in full frame mode, the vignette went away. Yes, you reduce the amount of megapixels, but it gives you more options. It gives you options. You don't need to just buy an adapter or you don't have to have two separate cameras for it. It just works right out of the box. And what's great about Sony is I can literally use my MC11 adapter and put all my Canon lenses on that thing. And it's great. It's freaking perfect. And then I can even put the MC11 adapter on my A6000 and then use Canon full frame lenses or crop sensor. It's, I mean, wow. That's awesome. So I really didn't talk too much about the Canon, but there's really not much to say. If you're going to compare the Canon to the Nikon, considering there's two Nikons, I mean, okay, the good thing about the Canon, yes, it's much cheaper than the 5D Mark IV, and it has 30 megapixels as well. It's the same processor, whatever. And it's mirrorless. But come on, even the 5D Mark IV has two SD card slots, or one CF and one regular. Come on. We don't need to just settle for less anymore because the competition has it out there. If you're doing professional work, it's you need that redundancy. If your card fails, which more people are coming out saying the cards have failed. Somebody even said it was, yeah, it was Tony. Tony Northrop even said that one of his cards are messing up using the EOS R during the, the press event, freaking Maui, whatever. That's sad, he said he got it to get fixed, but that's that's the point. And him admitting that, I mean, he'll never get invited to a Canon event again if their prototype cameras or their pre-production models are messing up. Imagine when more people get their hands on them. And imagine whenever someone does a wedding and their card fails in the middle or the end and they can't recover their photos or it costs same price as another camera to do that that's crazy you're better off just buying a camera with two sd card slots having the 5,000 something autofocus points whatever it's stupid because it's, it's not usable you can turn on 4k and there's a crop i mean look i'm shooting 4k right now on my note 8 to record me and it's tracking me just fine none of that crop crap Oh, Canon, why? Why? You've seen the backlash of what Nikon was up against. You've seen the praise of Sony. So why are you doing this to us? Why? I would have just not released anything and then been fine. And then create something better, then release it. But Sony's up next again. Every camera Sony um, has out right now, every camera, even the NEX5, the A5100, I'd rather buy with their one card slots than these new cameras. I'm saving a lot of money. Because there's nothing that excites me. There's nothing that's enticing enough for me to care. To buy, to jump ships or anything. I guess I'm just sticking with the A7R3. I'll pick up the A7000 once that gets announced or whatever. Or the A7S3 for video since I have the Ronin S. But I really, like, I'm not afraid to jump ships. I am not afraid. I was really going to jump ship if one of those two manufacturers gave me what I wanted. And they haven't. I started off as a cannon shooter. I jumped ship because Sony has it. And I wasn't afraid to jump ship. Now, getting back to the Fuji, that would be a nice camera to add on for video. I like the Fuji colors. I don't know. This video is about to cut out for 10 minutes. Peace.
Oh, okay, never mind. I forgot. I, I thought I had it on the full 4K. I guess it's on 2K. But it's past 10 minutes and it's still recording. Well, that's fine with me. I guess I'll keep talking. Uh -huh. If you even got to this 10 minute point. Um, Alright, anyway. um, Yeah, the X-T3. I never cared. I was, like, it's sad that you would think that Canon would come out with a beast camera. You would think that Nikon would. But this little Fuji is much better. They give you the two card slots. They give you the 4K 60, which we still haven't seen on a Sony yet. We haven't seen it. We're going to see it. We're going to see it in about a week or so. It's probably already out, and you probably already own it by the time you even see this video. But if it works out the way I want, the A7000 is going to cost 1500 bucks. It's going to compete with the X-T3. It's going to have 4K, 60 frames, to just say, here you go, first crop sensor with it. Having, like, the rumor is, yeah, 30 megapixels, 30, or not, I'm sorry, not 30 megapixels, 30 frames per second, burst with a crop. For sports, that's amazing. That's something the A9 can't even do, and that camera's over $4,000. That's ridiculous, and it'll still have the 20 frames a second as well with, uh, no crop with the electronic shutter and then for mechanical sure you get your 10 11 frames whatever they're gonna give that's fine um, I don't care about 422 bit or 10 bit 8 bit maybe in the future I will maybe if they add those cool features for future proofing maybe I'll be happy about it I doubt it because like I'm loving the results of the A7R3's video, and it's not even as good as the A7 III. So, I'm happy with it. So, I, like, I don't really care about 8-bit, 9-bit, 10, 11, however many dang bits it gets up to. I don't care enough. I don't have a computer that's really good enough to render 4K that great. I, I did a screen capture yesterday, you can actually watch it, of me editing. It's a... Uh, I think it was like 30 minutes 30 something minutes it took like four and a half five hours to render it in 4k and that wasn't anything there was no real graphics it was just whatever the computer screen picked up sure i recorded the screen in 4k i recorded in 60 frames per second and i edited it in sony vegas 60 frames and exported it in 4k but imagine if I did that same thing with actual video. Like, imagine if I did that same thing with, like, um, other stuff, like just recording a video with my gimbal. I had on my CPU temperature thing, and it freaking said my temperatures on all four of my cores were, like, one in between 160 to 170, and it was starting to turn yellow, which means, like, caution, you know. It's getting in high temps. My processor is just not that great for it. And it's sad because I actually did buy a good processor. I bought the i7-8700K last week, but my motherboard doesn't support it. So I was either thinking I'll just build another computer or I'll just buy another motherboard and then just switch out all the parts. It's going to cost an arm and a leg to do all that crap so I just decided not to do that I just uh, I returned it because I'm like you know whenever I get enough money to actually afford doing that that's when I'll do it but for right now I'll just stick with the computer I have maybe I'll just do shorter 4k clips I just don't want my freaking computer just burn out because I want to record 4k for people that's not even going to watch my content anyway maybe in the future for now it's not really a big deal so yeah i was really surprised because like i was i seen in the, some of the thumbnails and um titles for the xt3 was like the greatest camera and i'm like you know let me let me see you know i'm not i'm not happy with what sony and nike i'm sorry i'm always happy with what sony does i'm not happy with what canon and nikon brought out so 
maybe this will be something good. And I'm so glad I clicked on it. It's really one of the very first Fuji videos I ever really clicked on because I never cared. I know there's like the XH1 and all that. And I looked into that because I'm like, all right, I want to see what the competition can bring. But I was never excited for a Fuji camera. I think, like, for real. This Fuji camera is going to top the GH5 and GH5S at a cheaper price point with a bigger sensor. I mean, that's, that's ridiculous. So that wouldn't be a camera I would jump ship to. It would just be a nice addition to my camera lineup. It'd be something I'd stick on the gimbal. It'd be something where I would just... I'd feel like those retro shooters just shooting just with something different. But if somebody says, why are you shooting with that? I'm like, well, I also have the Sony A7R 3 but hey, you should check out this Fuji and get them into it. It wouldn't be my only camera. Unless I was a hobbyist. For professional work, no. I need full frame. It's better. It's nicer. Better ISO capability. And just a nicer, just smoother image. It's bigger. Um, yeah. That's just how I see it. I feel like Fuji came out with something really cool, something different. I, I don't know really the specs of the X-T2, but for what I've read, this X-T3 is a lot better. So if you're on the fence for going to Fuji, you don't have to take my word for it, but just look into the X-T3. Because I would love to shoot 60 frames of 4K. And when I do get that powerful computer to use, because I want to slow down my footage. And it, I mean, it looks, like, it looks like a cool camera. It looks cool. But back to Canon, their EOS R, I feel like that's just camera number one. They're going to pull a Nikon when it comes to having multiple cameras. But I feel like they're going to have like a 1DX Mark II equivalent like um, for a mirrorless, like the EOS RX or EOS R Plus or whatever they decide to do. Probably the RX. And then that will cost like $3,400 or $3,000. And then they'll give us a two card slot. They'll give us real... 120 frames in 1080p and then they'll give us 60 frames 4k but by then Sony's going to come out with 120 frames in 4k with the A9R or something and then that's going to blow everyone up and it's going to cost like 4500 4, bucks or something but it's time because Sony needs they need a camera that can destroy the 1DX Mark II when it comes to video capabilities. And I feel like that they, they're they working on it. I don't think it's going to be the announcement coming up, but it's going to be the next generation next year. And then, yeah, Canon will have a 1DX Mark III. But maybe it'll be a mirrorless one. Who knows? Mirrorless is the future. I've said it since I got into photography a year ago. Other people have said it. And I believe them because of the, the possibilities with it. No clunky mirror box. What you see is what you get. And that's a misconception. Because if you're shooting flash, you're not going to see what the flash looks like beforehand. And with a lot of cameras, when you have that trigger on, it's going to um, show the exposure as the like as a way for you to actually see what's going on. Yes, you could do live view preview like with Sony cameras. You could set a hot key. But generally, unless you're using LED lights, you're not seeing what you're getting. So if you are shooting how I used to shoot, just natural light, it's perfect. It's idiot proof. You can't mess up shooting because as you're dialing your settings you're seeing like, oh, there's a shadow here. Let me raise my settings to get rid of all that. See, let me bring the brightness down. Let me bring the brightness up. See that, the shadow's gone. Because my cell phone could do all that stuff. And also, the shade. 
Anyway, this video is getting kind of long, 20 minutes of me just ranting about camera and stuff like that. It's kind of shaky the way I'm holding it. I just came from the gym. So, to sum it up, if I were to get one of those three cameras, it would be the Fuji X-T3. That's it. You guys have a blessed prosperous day. Enjoy everything. And may Jesus Christ bless you. Peace.